Oh my gosh, I am so excited. I've never been on a helicopter before. It is time to go on our journey. But Steve's late. Man. Wendy. Oh. Wendy. Oh. Wendy. Hi. Not late. I didn't see Not you late. over there. See how you are? You're always way ahead of the game. Always way ahead of the game. I didn't see you. We have a story to tell first. Right. Oh, oh and yeah. Zoo Adventures. It's Monday. It's 10 o'clock. Zoo Adventures. I was excited for the adventure part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. After the story. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, let's do it. <sighs> Sorry, guys. How's everybody doing today? Did you have a good weekend? I hope so. My name is Steve. Know some of you. Met some of you. Hope everything is going great. We have a fun story to tell for you guys today. We're going to introduce you to this really ginormous animal, but there's a ginormous story to talk about first. So hang with us. Yes, you're going to meet an animal, as long as everything goes well. We'll see if that went well. But I want to tell you the story first. In Africa, you guys know where you are now? We're in the North Carolina Zoo. We're in the tracking station of the North Carolina Zoo. But in Africa, there's this conflict, right? There's this challenge between people and elephants. Elephants require hundreds of pounds of food a day. Hundreds, with an S, of pounds of food a day. And people, they need to eat too. And people have farms and, and places like that that they grow their food, right? But for an elephant, that farm is like a buffet. There's so much food there that elephants will go in and invade the farm, eating the food for the people. And that's a, that's a bummer. That's a challenge for the people. So how do we work on this? Check this out. Imagine this. Imagine this number of elephants looking for food, looking for water. So we have to man it, find out what's going on here with these guys. Want to see the damage? I mean, look at this. I mean, this is real conflict, guys. So this is everything's nice and good and ready to be harvested. And then, unfortunately, the elephants come by. So it's a real story. It's a real challenge. Right, and we need to make sure that we're kind of on both sides. We want to see both sides of this issue. Yes, we're there where the elephants are, but we're there as people, as humans, growing up these farms. So we're taking some of the space, but how do we learn to live with this? How do we learn to live with the challenge of both? Well, one of the things we found out is that we can actually track elephants. And here at the North Carolina Zoo, we have a tracking program that's going on. Let's show you what's going on with that. Check this out. Helicopter laser, Wendy. Helicopter All laser. All right. Dude. So on this side of the tracking station is a really important story. And it's one of those things that can be missed just like that. By the way, thanks to you guys who are answering questions. Uh, I don't know who all is there today. I know, I'm pretty sure Rich and Drew are there. I think Leslie is there. So thank you guys very much for answering questions. I missed somebody else. So continue. Oh, turn that down so you guys don't even know what's going on at Cat Chimp right now. I don't know what's going on at Cat Chimp either. Um, so yeah, thanks to you guys for answering questions. So this is a story that sometimes people, you know, you come and you're excited, you want to see the animals, and some of the stories that we try to tell are kind of important, and we're really excited about them. So this is one of them. We actually have a collaring program in Africa. Cameroon is one of three countries that we're active in. And what we do is our vets, Dr. Mike Loomis before, Dr. J.D. Minter now, going over and they're actually darting elephants and collaring them. You collar the matriarch. You collar the boss female because she makes all the decisions. In elephant world, it's a matriarchal, a female-dominated society. Female, do 
there was a big holiday this weekend. Ooh, yeah. Wasn't there? Yep. Definitely female dominated. And no, we didn't forget on Friday. We had a plan. Check this out. We want to do a shout out to our mothers for Mother's Day yesterday. And here are our mother, are my mother. Uh, your mom and your sister are watching. I saw them. Oh, already? Yep. So, Mom, love you to death. This is Mom with a little baby Steve. Little baby Steve. And he's not that baby anymore. That's one of ten times baby Steve ever wore a tie, I think. <laughs> my mom coming to visit the butterfly habitat here at the zoo. I couldn't cut Dad out because Mom and Dad are still married. So I wanted to have him there. And I want to point out this little lady over here. That's my sister. She's watching. And she's a mother, too. And my wonderful wife, Lee, mother to her children and my daughter as well, Ty. Um, thank you guys very much. We love you to the nines. And we wanted to share pictures of our moms for Mother's Day. Wendy has one, too. Hold on. Yeah, so Steve's going to hold up my picture uh, since it has my face on it anyway. Some of you have met Wendy accidentally on the other side of the camera. <laughs> This is what this lovely person works with. So and there's her mother. there's little Wendy and my mom, and uh, they're all the way in Colorado. So I miss you, mom. I can't wait for this to be over. And then I also wanted to give a shout out to my sister-in-law, and actually to all those mothers out there who have given birth during COVID-19, right before, right now, and have had to do it alone, and have not been able to share their new babies with their family. So this is my new nephew, Logan, and I haven't got to meet him yet, and I can't wait. So shout out to my sister-in-law, Emily. You are strong and awesome, and I love you guys, and I miss you, Mom. That's enough. I'm going to cry. You are crying. Back to the elephants. You're, you got a little tear there. <laughs> How about that, guys? Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are watching right now. To all of the mothers out there, thank you so very much for all you have done for everybody, because I can't even imagine some of the challenges that were proposed. But in elephant world, okay, back to, back to elephants now. Steve, back to you. So back to the elephants. This program is really important. And what it's doing is, again, collaring the matriarch. The matriarch is making those decisions. Time to move, time to go, time to stay, time to eat, time to migrate away. So when you're able to dart, the theme, dart that matriarch, you anesthetize her. You're able to put a big trapping collar on her and find out what's going on. Find out where they're going. And to me, one of the biggest parts of this project is that we didn't just keep the information to ourselves. We didn't just hold on to it, which would have made an amazing story, an amazing paper, and people could have made, kind of published it, and it would have been really cool. Elephants migrate, because that's what we found. And we found these migration patterns in elephant world, in the parks, in the lands where the people live too. We could have kept that, published it, and been good. But we didn't do that. We shared it with the governments. We shared it with the villagers to say, guys, look, if an elephant is in the Northwest, well, you don't want, to be, you don't want your crops there, so harvest your crops. They're going to go harvest some crops <laughs> right now. Not really. And if you're in the Southeast, then guys, maybe you want to be planting. So as the elephants migrate towards you, you can begin to harvest. And by sharing that information, sharing it, not keeping it, we're able to mitigate and literally eliminate some of that human-elephant conflict. Does it work? Yeah, look up here. Wonderful picture, it's up here. So that's a darted elephant. And Wendy's going to come down. After the elephant has darted, after the elephant has a collar on, then we're able to give it a reversal drug, and it wakes them back up. Until you get here, mom up, calf there, all good. Elephants are massive animals, right? We've collared, I think, like 42 of these animals, according to Dr. Minter. He told us 42, over... 12,000 days of data? Whoa! This is our longest reaching conservation program. As a matter of fact, it was our very first conservation program at the zoo. And it's still going on, even better. Check this out. This is so cool. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. 
That's it's a mighty big uh, uh, dog collar you have there, Steve. Gosh. This is... Oh. How tall are you? I'm 6'3". <coughs> this is a collar of an elephant that you use in Africa. Uh, wow. That's crazy. It weighs 35, maybe 40 pounds. And all that weight's in the counterweight, which is right here. And the counterweight is there, I think. I don't know the counterweight. One of these is really heavy. <laughs> Wendy thinks it's the other one. Oh, well, tell them why they use a counterweight. Yeah, I'm going to. We're going to find out which is... Oh, that's really Oh, heavy. there, there that's you go. Really <laughs> there you I go. was right. <laughs> this is a counterweight. It's on the bottom. It keeps the collar down. So, on the elephant, it goes like this. I'm going to show them here on the picture. Oh, fine. i got to carry the 35 thing in. You're going to carry the camera and show them a picture. I'm going to show them you getting a hernia, I think. <sighs> and then the transmitter up here is what is shooting the satellite signal up into space. And that satellite signal is what we're tracking. So some of you, we've talked about SMART in the past, a whole other technology. SMART is more for software and, and, and moving poacher anti-poaching programs around. This is a true satellite tracking program. When, we had a question. Uh, someone asked how long the collar stays on. Really? Awesome question. And we have an answer for you, which is kind of fun. Uh, battery life about three years. Battery life about three years. The collars can stay on the elephants maybe five. If we need to go out and take them off, we can. But this leather, this material, degrades in about five years. It'll just fall off in about five years. Fun story, even when the fuck collar falls off, sometimes the elephants will keep the collar with them. There's nothing keeping it on the elephant. It's, it's, it's broken off, right? Sometimes the elephants will keep part of that collar with them. It's kind of like they're bling, right? They're putting it on. JP says you can find them. Dr. Minner says you can find them kind of carrying these pieces of collar around with them. Who knew, right? So it becomes like a status symbol. I'm making that up, I have no clue, right? I don't know what elephants are thinking, but it's kind of neat to think about that. It's kind of fun to, fun to kind of get into why are they carrying it around? Are they used to it? I don't know. So our longest running conservation program the North Carolina Zoo, this elephant tracking program, we're in Cote d'Ivoire, I think that's how it's pronounced, right now. We have three elephants currently that are being um, satellite tracked in Africa. In Cartoir, I think that's right. You pronounce it. I might not be quite right, but um, we don't have any elephants in Cameroon now, and none in Nigeria. Um, those are the three countries that we're working in. Um, all this trying to help find out park boundaries, situ situate where the elephants are going, and then sharing that migration back and forth. Really, really key. Keep asking those questions, guys. If any pop up about the program itself. Please shoot some program, some questions to us. We'd be happy to answer those. Uh, I think some of you may want to meet one of the ginormous animals that we have. Anybody out there want to meet a ginormous animal? I do, Steve. Wendy, that, well, you know, Wendy, you, 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 no, Wendy. You guys ready? You did set it up, right, Wendy? You ready? We, how, how are we supposed to let the keepers know? Do you remember? Weren't, weren't you send, sending that email? I had bobcat. I had snakes. You had elephants. I'm... I'm almost positive. Maybe try calling him on the radio. I'm pretty sure I did. It was Friday. I was excited. Right. It was Friday. 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 That's the excuse, Friday. Let's find out. Education jerkin to Keeper Kaufman. I think it was a low. I think it was a. Hey, we're ready if you are. Fantastic. So we'll see you in a sec. So they're on their way. How cool is this? Yay. Oh, Yay, I remembered. <laughs> you did remember, Wendy. She's like, guys, give Wendy a clap. Yay, I need it. It's Monday. <laughs> She's back at it. Um, what's that? We've, we've had people donate already oh, this morning. Are you kidding me? Didn't even shout out to the donation box? Uh, we didn't have to. We've already had five people donate. And one in honor of their anniversary, which is Ivory. 
Ah, it's the year of ivory, and they donated really? to elephant conservation. Thank you People so much. So smart. Thank you guys so much. If you are so inclined, you can the donation button. Yep, we could definitely use some help. Um, as you might imagine, some of the receipt money that we usually take in, and that money oftentimes goes to um, help with education programs, help with conservation programs, help to make sure the animal care is taken care of to that extreme level that we want it to be done all the time. So if you have it and you can, you don't mind clicking that donation button, we'd love to see it. Um, you guys have helped us at Zoo Education already create over $1,500 in donations. And that is fantastic. Uh, it's awesome to see. And the guys, it's happening all across, right? It's, it's so neat to see. Um, people are stepping up and going, you know what? The zoo matters to me. What the zoo is doing matters to me. Here at the North Carolina Zoo, and in Cincinnati, and in Denver, and in all these other locations. So from us to you guys, thank you guys so very much. Oh, I see keepers. We see keepers? Let's I see what's see going keepers. on. Let's see who it is. Rounding the corner. Yay! Oh, you don't get the duck. You don't get the duck. Oh, uh, Steve, it says low clearance. Yeah, whatever, man. It's a bright yellow Come helicopter, on. Steve. So how are you guys doing? Good, how are you want to introduce yourself, I'll, I'll get louder. All right, uh, Nancy. Keeper Nancy. Deb. And Keeper Deb. Do you guys have any shout-outs for Mother's Day? Uh, happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you, Kathy. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you, Kathy. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you, Lisa. Love you, Lisa. I'm repeating because the masks and the muffle look pretty good. They work with them. They work with... They, come on, well, I, I'm trying to stay six feet. Okay, sorry. There we go. So yeah, they were, they're working with mammals. They've got the masks on. All right, guys. We're so excited. I hope this is going to be fantastic. You guys are excited as well. We are very excited. We're actually going to open up this garage. This one? Yep. This one right this here. And now we can get the helicopter out. Oh, yes. later. I've been, later. I've been practicing. <laughs> All right. Oh, I had something to lay over there. I've got things to share with you guys a little later on. Whoa. Are you kidding me? Amazing. Are you kidding me? So Keeper Nancy, Keeper Deb, going to help us out today. Thank you guys so much for them. Want to make sure we shout out to those guys. This Holy is such a cow. perk. This isn't open very often. So. And we are so excited to be here to share with you. <laughs> All righty. May we ask you who's who? So we have Batir on the left. Okay. And she's 18 years old. And then her mom, Tonga, is on the right, and she's 42 years old. Batir's 18, Tonga's 42, Batir is on the left, over there. <laughs> and Tonga, the mom, 42. 42. That's crazy. And these, you can imagine, if you're working with animals that weigh 8, 9, 10, 11,000 pounds, you better have a relationship built up with them. Look at those teeth. That's crazy. People don't believe me sometimes. It's that big. It's that big. That's a tooth. Replica. Look how big it is. Look at my whole head. So the training that they do with the elephants, a lot of hands-on. Nancy working with uh, Tonga there. Deb working with Batir on the left. It's building that, trust, building that relationship. Through those relationships, they're able to provide veterinary care, health care. So the animals are literally participating in that. It's not just random. It's not just happenstance that some of these activities are being um, trained with the animals. There's a trust being in, being built. If they need to look at certain parts of the animals' bodies, May I ask you guys, I know that you guys have done some blood draw work. Is that kind of standard or is that with these yeah. guys too? Yeah, definitely. So we actually are looking at their hormones. So okay. we email elephants, we want to see one potential is for breeding. Because okay. we love to have baby elephants. So we draw on the female elephants about once a week. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So Nancy's telling us that, yes, so there, is, there are blood draws on all the females. are looking for their hormone levels to see if there is potential um, for breeding down the road kind of tracking that, those hormones. 
And it's one way, so they're actually, the elephants will allow the keepers to take those blood draws, to take the blood voluntarily. You don't have to anesthetize, you don't have to sedate. Look at that mouth. That is awesome. Nice shot, too, by the way, Nancy. Good stuff. Good arm. <laughs> Lots of practice. Deb working with Tonga or a Batir, getting her to turn around. That way they can see the entire animal's body. Is all the locomotion still good? Everything's solid? I saw Nancy ask for uh, a trunk blow so they could actually oh. get almost like a nose blow. Like, like a, a, yeah. So that's kind of cool. Get a sample of oh, that wonderful. Sn- oh, a little stealing going on. A little stealing, going, stealing going on. Mom is taking. I guess mom can take as she needs. We've, they, they don't know that this is mom and daughter. Oh, they haven't said that yet? No. Oh, absolutely. Batir on the left is Tonga's calf. I say calf. Batir, or Batir's 18 now. And you're here, they're showing the ear. So if they need to take the blood from the ear, they can do that. So there's that trust. Tonga's like, yeah, sure, you can have my ear. Not a problem. I trust you to be good. I trust you that you'll take care of me, that you'll do it safely. Get this. Elephants can be left or right tusked. Is that sort just of like, like left and right handed? I was just going to say that. Oh, yep. okay. So if you're out there, raise your hand if you're left handed and, and great and awesome. Because <laughs> left handers are awesome and great and incredibly cool. I'm not biased or anything. That's a little biased, Steve. My daughter, Ty, and I are left handed. But you know, hey, that's how it goes. Uh, and it is also the same percentage. You'll see fewer left handed or left tusked elephants in, in uh, their populations. We do have a, a good question there asking why uh, she only has one tusk. That's so, a really good question. Yep. Would you mind sharing? And I'll, be, I'll try to repeat, guys, so you guys can hear. So, oh, thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. So their tusks are actually teeth. They're made out of ivory. Um, and usually they're constantly growing. So a lot of times when you get up close to that tusk, it has a lot of imperfections. There's a lot of different grooves and everything like that. Steve actually has a really good fra- fracture of a tusk here. So you can see how imperfect they are. Um, have some dents and things like that. And every once in a while, they'll ch- uh, chip and crack off. But Tear actually cracked hers off pretty good. It goes all the way back into the pulp, which is kind of like the gum line. And so we were noticing that she actually was starting to develop an infection. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so then we actually had to put her under sedation, and we had a dentist come in and remove that tusk. Um, so it's just a hole now. Um, it's kind of like your belly button. It's just like the cave <laughs> nice. in there. But it's not open. Um, it's just a little, little cave. So. I've got to ask, Deb, can she smell that? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but no, that was awesome. Fine. So Deb put a couple pieces of sweet potato, yam, sweet potato, which guys come here. And Batir was able to reach up and find them. So can she smell that? She can probably smell it. Um, she also watched me put it there, too. Oh. <laughs> she, saw, she saw her put it there, too. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, that's neat. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Nancy. Yes. No, so thank you so much. And that was just kind of fun to watch. Batir reaching. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're actually going to ask Tonga and Batir to go up to our north habitat okay. now. Okay, this is and great. We're going to bring Artie out. And Artie has no tusks. And he had a similar situation like Batir did, where he cracked those tusks all the way back. So he's, oh, he wow. doesn't actually have any tusks. Okay. Is, is this going to be open, Nancy? Hmm? Is yeah. this going to be open for yeah. Artie? Yeah. You guys, hang on, guys. I'll show you some biofacts real quick and, and kind of They're gonna look ship how these guys. big. Okay. Pay attention to how big these guys are. Can you guys help us out? So hang on for a few more minutes, y'all. Pay attention to how big. Thank you very much, Nancy. That's awesome. So get an idea. Imagine where those guys are. Okay? Awesome. Thank you very much. What they're doing is they're going to shift these guys over into one of our very large habitats over yep. here. And then they're going to bring oh, got snotted on. our male over. Nice. That's awesome. Awesome. So Deb's opening up this hydraulic door over there. They'll release the elephants and they can go into the north habitat. And hang on, guys. You want to meet Artie. Yep. Now, now they're... That's the wrong direction. <laughs> I'm going to go back to bed. This is the beautiful part about training elephants is that they do what they want. Uh, Tong is about 8,000 pounds. So well, you know, you can't go say, excuse yeah. me, tap, tap, tap. Can't, can't, work, huh? can't make an 8,000 pound animal do what you want it to do. So we'll let her figure it out and come back. And she will. That's awesome. 
Yeah, they always say working with keepers and work, working with keepers. <laughs> working with children and working with animals because the keepers have been amazing. Imagine, see, all this cool stuff that we've been able to share with you. Wendy and I can't do it alone. We, there's no way we can do it. So our, we, are, we have a wonderful relationship, and the keepers are so excited and so passionate about sharing what they do and sharing their animals with you guys. So shout out, huge shout out to the keepers here at the North Carolina Zoo um, today with Nancy and Deb, but all the other ones that have been helping us set these programs up. So I want to share a couple things with you. Here's that two thing. Man. And you saw it up in the mouths when they were having the had the trunk up behavior, and they were able to. There yeah, she, we need you on softball team there, too, by the way. There she goes. See that cannon? Batir decided to go. She's up in the habitat. So yeah, this is the gum line. This is the gum line. That little brown line. Again, this is a replica. This is a replica. But it's the right size and shape. So this is the gum line. So when you're looking up in the elephant's mouth, that's what you saw. They grow from the backside. And they don't erupt up and down. They don't go like this. They're being pushed forward, almost like it's on an escalator, being pushed forward as elements go. They have a grand total, you guys remember, talked about this a long time ago, four of these. Four. One, two, three, four. And that's it in the two tusks. Those tusks, by the way, are modified incisors. So it's a modified tooth. It's just a, it's just a special tooth. <laughs> Gotta love the relationships, right? She's back. Come on, Mama, let's go. She's pooping for us. Well, isn't that nice? It's like it's like we cued it. All right, let's give her some privacy. <laughs> there we go. I was like, yes. give a lady a little privacy. And we'll share that with them because we have some. Yeah, we, 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 we gave her some. <laughs> some then took it away. But we, we so, brought some for you. Through the magic of Facebook and education. Ta-da! Ah! Poop cam. Poop cam. Poop cam. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> that was fun. It was fun. Okay, I'm, I'm sure, done. I'm sure our digital guests are thinking, yes, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. No, this is not brand. This is this is probably I've been here for eleven or twelve years old. And we we shellacked it, we put the sanitized the first cleaned it, then we shellacked it and lacquered it and painted it and all kinds of crazy stuff to give it so we're able to hold it. And it's just I mean it's plastic now, can you hear that? Uh, but what I do want you to notice is that elephants are keystone species. By the way, their status in, in their natural habitat is vulnerable, but watching. Vulnerable, not classified as endangered species. Oh, there oh you go. Nancy picked us up Thanks, a, a fresh one. You, uh, you really didn't have to. That's literally farmed a table. Is brand spanking new. There you go. Look That's inside. fresh. Can you see? I'm not cleaning that up. fine. <laughs> Very fresh. I this wish, is the relationship we have, guys. I wish there was smell-o-vision in here. No, you don't. It's very earthy, right? It's earthy. It's, it's good for the lungs. It's good for the lungs. But notice what's in there. Notice what you see. You do see grass. You do see, you might be able to see some small seeds. You see, in this case, hay. Um, elephant digestive system is not very good. It's not a very digest. The, the, their digestive system isn't very good. You can see that again here. What? With all this hay, because now it's a little bit easier to get close to it. Even though it really doesn't smell bad, guys. It's just like dung. It's just poop, yeah. right? Um, so you can see that material in there. As a keystone species, animals in their natural habitat, as a keystone species, they're kind of like ridiculously important. They do things to the habitat, and other animals can take advantage of it. If you're 10, 12,000 pounds, 8,000 pounds, moving through a space, you're going to make changes to that space, make changes to that habitat, aren't you? So some things that are going to happen is they're going to knock a tree down to get to the leaves and the fruit at the top. But when they do that, now there's a big hole left, and sunlight can come in and grow up new plants. As they're going through the forests and jungles of Africa, they're creating pathways for other animals to use. When they knock a tree down, there's other food there now as well. 
And with those amazing tusks, they're digging for water sometimes. And now they're creating watering holes for other animals. So as a keystone species, if I take the elephant out of the habitat, then all the animals that rely on that, even this, this is hugely important. This is seed dispersal in the natural habitat. This is food for the dung beetle and the places that they can lay their eggs. Water. So even this, it's like a one-stop shop for a lot of animals. Now, I'm glad I don't have to go here. But if we get out of our humanness, there's a lot going on in that pile of poop. Question. What do we do with the poop here at the zoo? That's a lot of poop. It is a lot of poop. It's hundreds of pounds a day. Hundreds of pounds a day that's coming out. And it's got to be picked up, got to be cleaned up. So the keepers here, Nancy, Deb, everybody else in their, in their world, <laughs> are is picking that poop up. Got to, got to make sure, got to have a clean habitat, clean space, right? It's only right. We actually compost the feces here from the zoo. We compost all that poop, all that dung, to North Carolina Zoo. And when we compost it, we take it over, we got a gentleman here, George Adams, he act, his job is, one of his jobs, one of many, is to turn those compost piles. SSA, our food service, providing um, compostable um, foodware, flatware, all of that is being composted. Not just the elephant poop, rhino poop, giraffe poop, zebra poop, all, especially the herbivores, a lot of the plant eaters, all of it being composted. And through that turning, and compost and material, we're making amazing dirt. We're essentially making amazing dirt for the animals, for us to, for, not for the animals, for, the, for, for our plant staff to use at the zoo. We have, a, we have a very brave squirrel right here as we wait for uh, Artie to come up. There's a very brave squirrel that stole a piece of sweet potato from the elephants and it's oh, just... No wants to come steal this other piece right here. That's you really funny. Look at him. Both look, those way more than he does. Look at him. He's like, oh, there's a person here. Hey, Oh. <laughs> Can we help you? I don't think he's going to fit through that fence. Not with that piece of sweet potato he's not. <laughs> oh, he did it. Uh -huh. He went underneath. Yeah. <laughs> we get very easily distracted here. <laughs> Let me show you something else kind of cool. Are we done with that one? Are we done with that? I can't remember. Are we done? Yeah. Any questions? Keep Drew and Rich going. Keep let, keep them busy. Check this out. Elephants, mammals, or elephants, mammals. Oh, sorry, you're. Hmm. I just. <laughs> you're, you want the helicopter? That's what you're still I saying. really, I was like, oh wait, I gotta look at Steve with this. You don't have to look at Steve. Let's... Are they mammals? Well, of course they're mammals. They're covered in hair. You can't see it very well, but check this out. This is hail from, hey, blah, blah, blah. hair. What is it? Repeat after me. Hair. Hair. From an elephant. From an elephant. Thank you very much. Good I job. appreciate that. Good job. So this is hair from the tail of an elephant. Look how thick that is. What's it feel like? Um, kind of looks like so really thick fishing wire. People often, what I hear a lot of times is it feels like um, uh, wire on a weed whacker. Oh yeah, okay. That's what I hear a lot. We wire on a weed whacker, uh, and it's thick. I mean, it's it's a serious thing. Kind of get an idea. Excuse me. You might be able to see my hairs in there a little bit. That's on this really cord, thick. On that cord. Um. You saw one of my notes there. Three, three years. But the people of Africa use those long hairs of the elephant and of the giraffe for all kinds of things. They might make rings. Uh, they can make jewelry from them, maybe bracelets. Um, they can even make uh, brooms out of that material. Oh, that's so important. So they're repurposing that material from the elephant. Yeah, got a question. I had, well, I don't have a question. I had a little story about even actually repurposing elephant poop. Oh, yeah. I met a gentleman um, from Africa when I was working a hospital program, and he said growing up in Africa, his parents would flatten the poop, put it on the roof, let it dry, and they would use it to start fires. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And then remember, we sell poop paper in our gift shop. We have poop paper. We have poop paper. Since our story today was this ginormous story about this ginormous challenge, right? So we wanted to talk about the bigness of elephants, too. We showed you the big tooth. You saw the big poops Party. over there as well. Yes. 
<laughs> Speaking of big. Speaking of big. Artie's, yeah, I can't wait for you to meet Artie. Artie's taking his time. We'll... You guys hanging in there with us? You guys having fun? I hope so. Wow, that's... Yowzers. That's... Can't see anything, oh, Steve. Sorry, I got, I got a little too close. That's... My bad. Yeah, that's huge. My bad. How big is that? How tall are you again? You remember how tall I am? Somebody said I'm not tall I am. I'm done talking. Six three. Nancy was oh. close. Nancy was close. Nancy said six two over there. I'm six three. What part of the elephant is this? What part of the elephant is this? Now this is this is cut out of a piece of vinyl. This is not a real one. Cut out a piece of vinyl. Measured from one of our elephants. This is Cesar's ear. Measured from cut out of vinyl. Not his real ear. But that's how big their ear is. And can you imagine that? I mean, look at that. And they flap it back and forth. That helps them cool themselves. It's kind of like built-in air conditioning. There's a lot of blood. It's a vascular organ. A lot of blood up there. As I flap it back and forth, I can cool that blood, and the blood is pumped to the rest of my body, keeping me cool. That's one heck of an ear. That's really cool. It can be five feet tall, three feet wide, and one ear, one ear can weigh 115 pounds. An ear can weigh 115 pounds. Are you kidding me? There's the foot. Ta-da! Look at that! Wow. Look at it. Watch this. Check it out. What size shoe do you wear? I wear a size 11. Artie would wear like a 48. Can you imagine? Speaking of Artie. Uh-oh. Boom, look who's here. Artie. Yay, Artie. Good job, buddy. Artie's a big male. Big, big kid. Look at this. He's massive. Do you guys remember how now how small? <laughs> look how big he is. Can we, do you guys have an idea about, 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 he, about what he might weigh? He weighs about 13,000 pounds. 13,000 pounds. What is that, 60 people? 65, 200 pound people. That's three pickup trucks. 13,000 pounds. And he is huge. He is tall, he's a big boy. He's gotta be 10 feet? About 10 and a half feet tall at his shoulder. At his shoulder, ten and a half feet tall. That's a basketball hoop, guys. At his shoulder, he's as tall as a basketball hoop. Yeah, and keep in mind, he's actually a, a little bit of a step down. So you're yeah, not getting great the full, point. Full height of him. Uh, great point. Tonga weighs about eight thousand pounds. So eight. Your weight oh, wow, five thousand, two and a half tons more. Thirteen thousand pounds. How many tons is thirteen thousand pounds? Math test. You're like, I'm watching elephants. I don't want to do math. Six and a half pounds. Six and a half tons. And there's the ear. You heard Deb call. If you didn't hear, Deb called ear. Put the ear out. Now they can, again, do a blood draw if they need to. That ear is an amazing tool. You see him using... You guys hear that? Okay. Oh, So cool. So if you didn't hear Nancy, they're trying to kind of position Artie so you guys can see the back side of the ear where all the blood vessels are. And look at all the work. Look at the trust. Look at that relationship. Deb's able to ask. Nancy's moving around as well. Target. You've heard that phrase before. 
to hold the trunk. So there's that retouch. I want you, I'm here, it's okay. Don't be nervous, things are good. Nice job, nice job. That vocalization we heard a little while ago, is that a happy noise? Uh, the, the noise from him? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's usually a very content noise. Content noise. Um, Tom is actually rumbling right now. That really. Oh, is he? Because all that construction's happening over there. They yeah. Can actually feel the vibrations. Oh no, kidding! That's right. You guys remember hearing that story we talked about? Where they can feel vibrations through their feet. Those infra sounds, those very low sounds. They yeah. actually hear, quote unquote, hear, feel those vibrations through their feet. <laughs> That's another thing you don't get this. You don't always get that, guys. This is so exciting. And it's awesome to be able to share with you here on Zoo Adventures what's going on. <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> As Wendy has said a few times here lately, our jobs do not stink. We have a good job. And it's awesome to be able to share this with you guys. Look at that foot. Look at that foot. So we never do a whole lot of foot stuff up here. So that portal right there is actually for his foot to go into. Oh. Very rarely open. So you're like, so you're seeing him just kind of be like. No. Uh, I don't know what I'm supposed Where? to do. <laughs> is it here? No. Okay, we're here. So this door that's open right here is where he should put his foot, but he's not used to doing that up here. So he's a little confused. He normally does his footwork Look down in the that. barn. So you had him moved. Oh, that was amazing, Deb. That was really cool. Look at that foot. That's so if you guys want to watch that, was Deb got him to turn around, come down a little bit, now trying to get him to show where that foot will come through. You want to tell them why they do the The footwork? footwork. Absolutely. So the foot of an elephant, the feet of an elephant, as you might imagine, are ridiculously important. That's a heavy, heavy animal, right? So those legs, those, those trunk-like legs and those massive feet carry that 13,000 pounds. Really important, as you can, as you obviously, duh, right? So you have to do footwork on them. You gotta make sure that their feet are in great shape, are in great condition. Oh, oh, so close, so close. Good. So they're able to inspect the feet, make sure there's no, make sure there's no cuts, Amazing. no imperfections. They can actually work on the nails. You see the nails there? They can do the work on that foot. And it's something that's really vital. And it's another way that the North Carolina Zoo excels in its care and wellness is its care of elephants. All the training that you see, all of that participatory behavior, the elephant's going, you know what? Because you've done this with me, I'm happy to work with you as well. And it's an amazing relationship. In this instance, Nancy and Deb have and other elephant keepers here as well. It's really, really fun to watch the relationship and those bonds come to fruition in some of the training behaviors. Very, very cool. You guys gotta love what you do, huh? Oh, it's the best job in the world. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's a really good job. It's the best job in the world. Well, <laughs> Nancy's saying it's the best job in the world. I think we can all agree that even a bad day at the zoo is a better day than we can imagine. Something to be said for that now. <clears throat> Something to be said for that. All right. Someone asked a really incredible question, Steve, that we can probably answer while they oh, shift. What's up? They are noticing that yellow line and are asking why the keepers stand behind the yellow line. Because their trunk it can reach seven, eight feet probably. So it's just their, one of their places to kind of go to, be, to know that they've got a safe location. That trunk is a multi-tool, right? We've talked about that before. But one of the things it can do is it can grab and hold on and pinch, hold on to things. So that tool is really important. So being aware of what it is, being aware of where it is and how strong it can be. Remember, they can pick a single blade of grass, but pick up a 600 pound log as well. So really good to know where they're going to be. So that little yellow line is that kind of distance where they want to be when they're kind of getting their thoughts together. What do we want to do next? Realizing that the keeper, no, I'm never going out there. Mm -mm. Uh, but the keepers can cross it as needed. You saw them to work on the foot and things like that or to get a little bit closer. So the keepers have their relationship. But this yellow line, that's even the keeper's safety zone. 
And it works good for when maintenance is down here fixing something. If, oh, great point. If yeah. it's a behind the scenes tour, because we do have those. So when you do come back to the zoo, and we hope you do, we do behind the scenes VIP tours. And this is one of them. Um, and that yellow line says, stay back. Yeah. And you'll see that in the elephant barn as well. That, that's, it's, a, it's just a safety, just a safety yes. measure. And it just makes sense, right? Wow. This is wow. so cool. What a day. Gonna head up in with the with the ladies. <laughs> We've now had twelve people donate, Steve. Wow, you guys are awesome. Realizing that money makes a huge difference at this time. We know it's a big deal for you as well. But thank you so very much for those of you that donated helping the North Carolina Zoo out a little bit of time right now. Look at that cannon. I'm telling you. No. We used to have a zoo softball team. I wish we had it now. I know where some of the recruits are coming from. I uh, know. <laughs> All the shoveling. Did you hear? <laughs> when, I, when I talk to shoveling. kids about uh, anyone at the zoo that I would not have an arm wrestling competition with, I always say elephant keepers. Yeah, I got to second that one. Because they do, they pick up a lot of poop. Very true. You saw a little bit, just a little bit. And all, oh, yeah. and all the food. How much do elephants eat a day? A hundred, two, three hundred pounds of food a day. Each. Right? Each one. These guys got to, got to take care of it. There he is. He goes. Say goodbye. Bye. Have a good day, oh, Artie. We're not done yet. We're almost done. Not us. You gotta say thank you to Deb. Thank Nancy you. Nancy take care of the elephants. So thank you very much, Deb. Appreciate it kindly. Whew. What a day. It is so much fun to share those with you guys. Thanks again for all the donations. I do have a couple crafts to share with you. They're over here. I think Nancy just came down. You say hi to Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. So, you've met elephants. You've fallen in love with them. Again, you can take a pledge to help elephants. These are on the website, Adventure, the, web, the Facebook group, Adventures in Education. It's a Facebook group. These are posted there. You can go there and check them out. So you can take a pledge and color it as you wish. There's a few of these. You pledge to visit. Go learn about ivory. Oops, sorry. And then celebrate elephants on August the 12th. That is National Elephant Day. So you can celebrate elephants on August 12th. Or you can celebrate them all the time by cut by printing these out, having a good color, and having fun with our pledges. Really cool. There's Nancy. Come over to say goodbye. Nancy, thank you so much. Hey, Nancy and Deb for setting this up. This is fantastic. If you guys get a chance, head out, check it out on Facebook Live, on, on Facebook. These videos are kept there as well. So you can check it out later and see some of the comments and questions. I can't even imagine all the love that was sent to you all for this program. Well, thanks for watching, so, guys. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Nancy. All right, guys. So, yeah, Wendy's it's, like... It's time to go, right? We get right. we get to go on our adventure now, yeah, right? We get to go. Yes. yes, we get to go on I'm the adventure driving. now. I'm driving. I'm driving. I'm driving. No. I've watched like three YouTube tutorials. I can totally handle it. Three YouTube tutorials. I can totally handle yeah. a helicopter. Nancy, drive this thing. Get in the oh, back. No. Oh, no, no, no. Get in the back. Wendy, you get it <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, Zoo Adventures. we got the whole crew's going with us. Yes. Zoo Adventures, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at 10 o'clock. Uh, be with us again on Wednesday, where we can meet some more amazing critters here at the North Carolina Zoo. Thank you for bringing us into your classroom, into your bedroom, into your dining room, into your, onto your deck, wherever you're bringing us to. We truly appreciate everything, guys. Stay safe, and we'll see you again at the North Carolina Zoo, hopefully one day soon. Bye. Wish us luck. Good Fingers bye. crossed. Bye. Don't let Wendy drive. <laughs>